Hello, friends. I thought with Halloween coming up, we might start reading some ghost stories together from the book of mysteries of the unexplained. Strange sights, creepy encounters, fascinating phenomena, and more. So it's quite a bit darker on the videos because I thought it might be fun to set a bit more of a creepy, spooky vibe. This is just a warning. If you have any photosensitivity, there will be flashing lights. So keep that in mind. And if you do have issues with flashing lights, maybe just listen to the audio. Let's get started. So our first story is the ghost of the sausage vat murder. The story of Louisa Lut Lutgert, the murdered wife of sausage king Adolf Lutgert, is a gruesome tale of betrayal, death, and a lingering specter. It is also one of the greatest stories in Chicago lore. According to legend, each year on the anniversary of her death, Louisa appears on the corner of Hermitage Avenue, where it once crossed Diversey Parkway. But her ghost not only haunts her old neighborhood, allegedly, she has also coaxed her treacherous husband into an early grave land of opportunity. Adolf Lutgert was born in Germany and came to America after the Civil War. He arrived in Chicago around 1865 and worked in tanneries for several years before opening his first business, a liquor store, in 1872. Lutgert married his first wife, Caroline Repke, that same year. She gave birth to two boys, only one of whom survived childhood. Just two months after Caroline died in November 1877, Lutgert quickly remarried a much younger woman, Louisa Bicknees, and moved to the northwest side of the city. As a gift, he gave her an unusual gold ring that had her initials inscribed inside the band. Little did Lutgert know that this ring would prove to be his downfall. Trouble for the Sausage King. In 1892, Lutgert built a sausage factory at the southwest corner of Hermitage in Diversey. But just a year later, sausage sales declined due to an economic depression. Lutgert had put his life savings into the factory along with plenty of borrowed money. 
So when his business suffered, creditors started coming after him. Instead of trying to reorganize his finances, however, Lutkert answered a newspaper ad posted by an English millionaire who made a deal with him to buy out the majority of the sausage business. The Englishman proved to be a con man, and Lutkert ended up losing even more money in the deal. Lutkert eventually laid off many of his workers, but a few remained as he attempted to keep the factory out of the hands of creditors for as long as possible. Lutkert's business losses took a terrible toll on his marriage. Friends and neighbors quickly heard the Lutkert's arguing and things became so bad that Lutkert eventually started sleeping in his office at the factory. He carried on with several mistresses and even became involved with a household servant who was related to his wife. When Louisa found out about his involvement with her relative, she became enraged. Lutgert soon gave the neighbors even more to gossip about. One night, during another shouting match with Louisa, he allegedly took his wife by the throat and began choking her. After noticing alarmed neighbors watching him through the parlor window, Lutgert reportedly calmed down and released his wife before she collapsed. A few days later, Lutgert was seen chasing his wife down the street, shouting at her and waving a revolver. Vanishing Louisa Louisa disappeared on May 1, 1897. When questioned about it days later, Lutgert stated that Louisa had left him and was possibly staying with her sister or another man. Louisa's brother, Dietrich Bicknies, asked Lutgert why he had not informed the police of Louisa's disappearance. The sausage maker told him that he'd hired a private investigator to find her because he didn't trust the police. When Bicknies informed the police of his sister's disappearance, Captain Herman Schudler and his men began to search for Louisa. They questioned neighbors and relatives who detailed the couple's violent arguments. Schuttler summoned Lutgert to the precinct house on a couple of occasions and each time pressed him about his wife's disappearance. Lutgert stated that he did not report Louisa's disappearance because he could not afford the disgrace and scandal. During the investigation, a young German girl named Emma Schimke told police that she had passed by the factory with her sister at about 10.30 p.m. on May 1st and remembered seeing Lutgert leading his wife down the alleyway behind the factory. Police also questioned employees of the sausage factory. Frank Bjork, a night watchman at the plant, told police that when he arrived for work on May 1st, he found a fire going in one of the boilers. He said Lutgert had asked him to keep the fire going and then sent him on a couple of trivial errands while Lutgert stayed in the basement. When Bjork returned to the factory, he went back to the boiler fire and heard Lutgert finishing his work around 3 a.m. Later that morning, Bjork saw sticky, glue-like substance on the floor near the vat. He noticed that it seemed to contain bits of bone, but he thought nothing of it. After all, Lutgert used all sorts of waste meats to make his sausage, so he assumed that's what it was. On May 3rd, Lutgert asked another employee, Frank Odorfsky, to clean the basement and told him to keep quiet about it. Odorfsky put the slimy substance into a barrel and scattered it near the railroad tracks as Lutgert had requested. A gruesome discovery. On May 15th, the police search was narrowed to the factory basement and a vat that was two-thirds full of a brownish, brackish liquid. Using gunny sacks as filters, officers drained the greasy paste from the vat and began poking through the residue with sticks. Officer Walter Dean found several bone fragments and two gold rings. One, a heavy gold band engraved with the initials LL. Lutgert, proclaiming his innocence, was questioned again shortly after the search and was subsequently arrested for the murder of his wife several days later. 
Despite the fact that Louisa's body was never found and there was no real evidence to link her husband to the crime, the police and prosecutors believed they had a solid case against Ludgard. He was indicted for Louisa's murder and the details of the crime shocked the city. Even though he had been charged with boiling Louisa's body, rumors circulated that she had actually been ground up into sausage that was sold to local butcher shops and restaurants. Not surprisingly, sausage sales dropped dramatically in Chicago in 1897. Hounded to the grave. Ludgard's trial ended in a hung jury on October 21st. The judge threw out the case, and so prosecutors decided to try the whole thing over again. A second trial was held in 1898, and this time, Ludgard was convicted and sentenced to a life term at Joliet Prison. While in prison, Ludgard continued to maintain his innocence and was placed in charge of meats in the cold storage warehouse. Officials described him as a model prisoner, but by 1899, Ludgert began to speak less and less often, quarreled with other convicts. He soon became a shadow of his former blustering self, fighting for no reason and often babbling incoherently in his cell at night. But was he talking to himself or to someone else? Legend has it that Ludgert claimed Louisa haunted him in his jail cell, intent on having revenge for her murder. Was she really haunting him, or was the ghost just a figment of his rapidly deteriorating mind? Based on the fact that neighbors also reported seeing Louisa's ghost, one has to wonder if she did indeed drive Ludgert insane. Ludgert died in 1900, likely from heart trouble. The coroner, who conducted the autopsy, also reported that his liver was greatly enlarged and in such a condition of degeneration that mental strain would have caused his death at any time. Perhaps Louisa really did visit him after all. The Ghost of Louisa Ludgert Regardless of who killed Louisa, her spirit reportedly did not rest in peace. Soon after Ludgert was sent to prison, neighbors swore they saw Louisa's ghost inside her former home, wearing a white dress and leaning against the fireplace mantle. The sausage factory stood empty for years, looming over the neighborhood as a grim reminder of the horrors that had taken place there. Eventually, the Library Bureau Company purchased the factory for a workshop and storehouse for library furniture and office supplies. During renovations, they discarded the infamous vats in the basement. On June 26, 1904, the old factory caught on fire. Despite the damage done to the building's interior, the Library Bureau reopened its facilities in the former sausage factory. In 1907, a contracting mason purchased the old Litgert house and moved it from behind the factory to another lot in the neighborhood, hoping to dispel the grim memories and ghost attached to it. Hermitage Avenue no longer intersects with Deversey, and by the 1990s the crumbling factory stood empty. But in the late 90s, around the 100th anniversary of Louisa's death, the former sausage factory was converted into condominiums and a brand new neighborhood sprang up to replace the aging homes that remained from the days of the Lutgerts. Fashionable brick homes and apartments appeared around the old factory and run-down taverns were replaced with coffee shops. But one thing has not changed. Legend has it that each year on May 1st, the anniversary of her death, the ghost of Louisa can still be spotted walking down Hermitage Avenue near the old sausage factory, reliving her final moments on this earth. <laughs>